how long did it take you to write Hope for the Flowers? Well, I really didn't start with something called Hope for the Flowers. I started with a th kind of theology of hope that I did in the middle 60s when I had been back at Ohio State and taking existential philosophy and just thrilled to be back in the middle of the exciting 60s at a state university, Ohio State University. And I was very glad to be back also because the Catholic Church was going through a big change, the biggest change it's gone through for hundreds of years, and where the windows had to be thrown open because it was getting stuffy in here, and Pope John the Twenty Third this wonderful, round, rotund, beautiful, loving fellow just called this Vatican II. And I wanted to be able to read some of the theological underpinnings of this, and so I was eager to be back at Ohio State and back in school as, a, as an undergraduate in my mid-30s. Okay. So it was during that time that I wrote this for my Grail movement to help to help us all sort of understand the great changes that were taking place and how the withering of hope in so many respects, whether it's hope in communism, hope in capitalism, hope in any of the isms at all, and hope even in our religious traditions was fading and changing and so radical. So I wrote this first book as a kind of simplified theology of hope, and that's what I signed my contract with Paulus Press for. Okay, so how long did it take me to write it? In a way, all of these things come out of a person's whole lifetime. All those years I spent in service with the Grail since I was 18 years old as a volunteer and working in Egypt. All of these things go into a thing like this. So then specifically, it was 1969 in August that I went to Hartford, Connecticut because I was having severe culture shock and coming back to the United States and seeing how rich we were in comparison to the girls I worked with in Egypt whose fathers were maybe making $50 a year. Oh, my goodness. Then so much riches and so much material goods around here. So there was a psychologist who was willing to work with me if I could be close. And so I had a little, I had $500 advance from Paulus Press, and I had another 500 because I was going to hand letter the book. And I had another 600 that I had saved from the YWCA that had paid for the money for me to come back because... I've been a volunteer all my life. And so with that, I went and had a $10 a week room in Hartford, Connecticut, and there I wrote this book and tried to get the first book up in shape. And then one day in April, this little story came all by itself. Now the butterfly and the caterpillar were always to me a great symbol of resurrection or of hope or of transformation, that you could dare look at this caterpillar and hardly believe there was a beautiful, winged, gorgeous creature inside that just looked so small. And I feel that's the way we look at ourselves a lot, that we see ourselves as this little crawling creature like me who can't keep her house clean, and that we don't realize that there's another wonderful being inside of us most of the time. So that was an image that had been with me a lot, that when somebody would die, that's what I would make a card of the caterpillar and the cocoon and the butterfly with the text from our Catholic liturgy that life is changed, not taken away. So that part was there. And then the experience of revolution in, in 1968 in France and throughout that those years was very powerful to me. And I kept asking the question, of, okay, what kind of revolution do we need? What kind could it be? So that's the that's how that came to be. So, obviously, I had written the first book before I went to Egypt. Then I was through Egypt. Then I was through 1968 and the whole revolutionary spirit of the middle 60s. And then I come back and I'm writing this book. And as I was working on it and working on it and polishing it and making illustrations for the first book, one day in April, these little caterpillars, which had become the cover of the first book because hope and butterflies is a it's a symbol of hope, no matter how you put it. So they sort of crawled out and became their own self. I wasn't really excited, but I thought, stay with it, Trina. Let it happen. So I just sort of sat and didn't eat all day and just kept writing and writing and writing. And The book was basically 90% done within that one day, the written part. 
it took another two years though to work out that other 10 percent and then to illustrate it so that's the way that was that's the that's the story of the of the genesis of how that those images came i didn't have a story in mind i didn't have a plot there was no outline it was never even typed not once so it was just lettered hand lettered all the time so that's how this story came it was given to me it didn't come from me it came through me